Hot Springs Village Inside Out is a closer look at the greatness of Hot Springs Village, Arkansas and the surrounding areas, people, places, experiences. Hot Springs Village is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host Dennis Simpson as we engage in weekly conversations to explore Hot Springs Village Inside Out. Today's show is brought to you by Central Arkansas's favorite radio station, KVRE. Find them on the dial at 92.9 FM. Stream them live at kvre.com. Remax of Hot Springs Village. The award-winning Remax of Hot Springs Village is the largest real estate office inside the village with over 30 full-time agents and support staff. Visit them to learn more about this beautiful place to solve your real estate needs. Call them today at 1-800-364-9007. Find them online at explorehsv.com. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village at 1-800-364-9007 or online at explorehsv.com. Ike Eisenhower State Farm. Ike and his award-winning team have been serving the insurance needs of folks all around Hot Springs Village since 1998. Ike has qualified for State Farm's President's Club, Chairman's Circle, and Hot Springs Village Insurance Agent of the Year. Call Ike Eisenhower State Farm today at 501-984-4100. That's 501-984-4100. Find them online at IkeEisenhower.net. Call them today for all your insurance needs because, like a good neighbor, Ike Eisenhower State Farm is there. For Hot Springs Village Inside Out, I'm Dennis Simpson. He's Mr. Pat McCarthy and one of my good buddies I haven't seen in way too long. How are you doing, Pat? I'm doing just fine, and I'm happy to be here with you. Yeah, good to see you, too. Pat and I work with the Technology Committee, formerly the Computer Club of Hot Springs Village. And, and let me distill this down real quick. We had a Mac Club that 20 years ago I spoke with and spoke to. We had a Computer Club and never shall the twain meet, theoretically, you know. And then we merged all those together. And now we don't even just work on PCs and Macs anymore. We work on phones, don't we, Pat? We absolutely do. We work on everything. And what exactly do you do with phones, Pat? You know, before I start, can I just say that I wanted to congratulate you on HSV Inside Out. I think it's a real service to the community. I really do. You're very kind, Pat. And I tell you what, it's it's Mr. Randy that thought this this whole thing up and uh, makes makes the ship go along. Can I do a plug real quick here? Absolutely. I don't know if you know, because we've just begun, but we actually have HSB Inside Out Radio on Saturday and Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock, where we play just little highlights of the show. Terrific. Uh, yeah, I, I think, to... you would, think you would enjoy it. I'm sure I would. Well, you're very kind, Pat. But what are you doing with phones and tablets and things these days? Well, in the very simplest of terms, and uh, without all the detail, uh, we get donated phones or tablets. Um, they go for scholarships. Any money that we get from them goes to scholarships for teens. We uh, sell the phones, and that money is what uh, funds those teen scholarships. That's in simplest terms. Now, in between, there's a few things that we'd have to do to okay. make them happen. A but couple of things see. actually have to go on in there, right? Absolutely. You know, I shut off every phone in the house except the home phone, which is a robocall for sure. So it just went off, and I reached over and knocked it off. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine, Pat. So let, let's address the common thing. Number one, I don't know anybody that doesn't have an old phone gathering dust or an old tablet, I guess even an old laptop, gathering dust in the corner. Is that correct? That is correct. And interestingly enough, when they go into that, uh, the garage or a cupboard or a drawer, uh, they're just going to get old and be useless after a while. So if you save them as a backup phone, that's one thing. But at a certain point in time, you're never going to use them again. So yeah, yeah. that's our stock and trade. That's what we're looking for. So, so let's go more to the details here. Number one, 
I'm a techie. So the very first thing I would say is, is, well, I'm concerned about my information, Pat. What do you do? I mean, my, it had all my numbers on there. 100%. That's our biggest concern, too. There's two things. Number one, we want to protect your data. We don't want it going anywhere. Now, clearly, if the person with the phone or tablet can reset it, then that goes a long way in protecting their data because it wipes the tablet or phone and takes it back to factory settings. Mm -hmm. If they can't do that and don't know how, that's where we sometimes run into a problem. There's about three things that we can do. If they donate the phone to us and let us know what their name and, uh, well, their name and phone number, we can get back to them and we can probably reset it with their help. Hmm. Uh, the second thing is we might be able to figure out how to reset it, but we do have to know if they have a pin on it, we do have to know that pin. If they have, in the case of an iPhone, if they have an iCloud account on it, we pretty much got to have that iCloud password. Mm -hmm. We'll find out what the iCloud account is because it will be right on the phone or tablet. Uh, in the case of Android, it might be a little simpler, but I think Android has has come closely in mirroring uh, iPhones, and iPhones have always been known for their great security. Um, it's really sad, but for every phone that we're able to reset and resell, two phones go to recycling. Really? In other words, I can't get into them. I, I just can't find them. Yeah, I try no, no. everything to do it, but yeah. that's that's one of the most important things. We want to protect people's data, and we're well, not to be exact. Yeah. We want to get rid of people's data, if you know well, what I mean. That's true too. Yeah, we we don't want it going out anywhere else. Yeah. So you take these phones, you wipe them, basically. You take this phone and wipe it, and number one, it's not in the closet anymore. It's not in e-waste anymore. It's going to be put back to use, and do you sell them on eBay, or how do you do this? Well, before I get to the selling, I have to check that phone out or tablet. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure that it works correctly. So I might reset that tablet to my own ID and password mm -hmm. multiple times. I'll check uh, things like the camera. I'll check the uh, sound on it. I want to play music. I want to make sure that it works properly within the context of what we can do. Sure, sure. I mean, we're not opening it up and doing anything like that, but we want to ma make sure it works. Then it's ready. Once, once I've checked it out, then it's ready uh, to go up for sale. And, uh, I'll tell you, I, I used to, I've, I've used Facebook Marketplace with a lot of success. I used to go on to Nextdoor and do it there, but that depended upon people being able to pick it up. Yeah. And the one thing about uh, Facebook Marketplace is I can have pickup or delivery. Hmm. And that's a nice option because that you can imagine that opens up the market across the entire United States. Well, it does. What is this? What would what would you say? And I'm just curious. I have an iPhone 10. I got an iPhone X or something. Okay. My mom is looking at upgrading one of her iPhone X's, and I don't need it anymore. I'm an Android boy. So you you take that information, we wipe it completely, you check the phone out, it's in good working shape. What would that bring? What, and, and then we'll talk about what we do with the money in just a minute. Well, I'll tell you, uh, because I sold an iPhone X, oh. and it happened to be the best phone. One of the, There's two of the best phones I've ever had to sell, and I got an iPhone X, oh. and I sold it for $300. Really? And we know, $300. let's go to the magic part, we take that money, we, the, the computer club, you volunteer your time for free and the people who help you, and then we put that money in the scholarship fund that typically either goes to Jesseville, Mountain Pine, or Fountain Lake scholarship programs for technology, right? Absolutely correct. And you're on that committee, so you take it from where the donations come in and then take it to the next step, which is finding the students uh, who get those scholarships. And and I gotta be I gotta be frank about this, you know. And I don't know if you know this about me, Pat, you know. But a lot of people just 
they think I'm just a pretty face. You know what I mean? And I'm more <laughs> than that, Pat. I'm more than that. I'm 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 a pretty guy and a, and a good voice. And a, no, I'm joking. My Thank point you, being, I, it is my pleasure. And I, I <laughs> you, you people who know me are going to go, oh, whatever. I tell you what, I encourage you. I, I have the opportunity and I'm flattered to do it every year when we have graduation or right before we have graduation, we have a scholarship award program. And if you think the f youth of our, of our world are shot and, and useless and whatever, you need to come with me. I've walked into a meeting where we had uh, one child, one teenager, one 17, 18 year old was awarded over $225,000 in grants, I mean, gr grants and scholarships. This is some of the most impressive kids I've ever. No, you know, look, we're we're talking of kids that get scholarships, so they're the top of the heap. I get it. Uh, every every time I go, I try not to tear up before it's time for me to give my. Here's our five hundred dollars, and we got three scholarships or whatever, because they these kids are amazing. They literally are. They are astonishing. You know, I agree with you a hundred percent. This is a real labor of love, and I can't think of anybody in our society that we could donate or give more to than teens today. They really have uh, a world that's so different from the world I grew up in, and it's challenging, and any help we can give them, I think it's great. And well, by the way, yeah. by the way, just one thing I should backtrack to, and that is up to now, the people that have donated phones and tablets I tell you, I couldn't thank them more because they are the people that make this program work. And we've exactly. been able to raise in two different phases of this program over $5,000. $5,000 in stuff that people were going to throw away. $5,000. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Have you been doing this three years or is it four? Well, we actually did it in two phases. Uh, from October 2020 to June of 2021, we started the program during that time. Um, and that raised $1,825. Then Pat had to go and have an operation. That Pat guy, you just can't count on him all I'm every day, telling right? Yeah, the guy is unreliable. <laughs> then on top of that, he did a long stint of inpatient therapy. Now, I mean, really. Can we not find better volunteers, Pat? I'm just curious. I, I'm, I'm telling you, talk about undedicated. Pr present and company that, included here. With. <laughs> and on phase two, which went from March of 2022, uh -huh. this past year, uh, to the present, we raised $3,175. Since March of 2022? And this That's is, we're right. recording this <laughs> end of January 23. Yeah, you can see how our level of sales went way up over a period of time, uh, fr especially from the last time, which was all meet and greet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the first phase, it was all meet and greet. I, I met them uh, close to my home here. Uh, this one, I included shipping because I didn't have as much mobility. Yeah. yeah and I'm yeah. telling you, it expanded the market to the entire United States. I've shipped to... Uh, South Carolina, I've shipped to Florida, I've shipped to Michigan, I've shipped to Minnesota, I've shipped to California. Um, they buy the, the item with shipping, pay a little sales tax, and then uh, I have to pay a little fee when something is sold. Um, but the balance that comes back to us, 100% to those scholarships. And, and Pat, I want to go into this. Number one, you put that money directly into the scholarship and, and the committee thanks you and, and appreciate you're, you're what helps fund that. At the other side of that, we have some very generous members of the technology committee who actually match those funds many times. So that 5000 may end up being $10,000 in scholarships and, and people just for what it's worth. These are not theoretical, you know, if you do this, we get this. This is cash in hand or check in hand to the university. This is real money. And it in these kids, it, it goes a long way for some of these kids. You're absolutely correct. You know, one thing I should say is the money doesn't go to the person. It goes to the school 
or institution where they're getting some advanced training after high school. Right. And uh, I think it's a good way to do it. It doesn't create any temptation on the part of the person getting the scholarship. It's truly a scholarship that goes toward their uh, books and, you know, whatever else they need for that school tuition, whatever. Well, and let's talk about that, Pat. One of the things that happens, and I know you've, you've been in the committee when we talk about this, you know, we'll have kids that go to college or start to go to college and don't quite make it. And that check never gets cashed. So right. come the end of the year or early next year, we put that back in the funds and get ready to do it again. Yeah. Um, it's, it, you know, our computer club does two things that I'm especially proud of. One is our help sessions. And we say members helping members. Mm -hmm. That's not correct. We help anybody. That's true. Anybody that needs help with their phone, tablet, whatever, computer, we help them. And the second thing is the scholarship fund. I'll tell you, it makes belonging to the computer club something special. In it, my it is, it, it's truly a reward. And I'll tell you what, you go back and touch on the help session in just a minute. And I want to touch on that for a sec. Part of the deal is, is that when I came here 20 to 21 years ago and Miss Renee asked me, our, our, our secretary asked me to speak. And I thought this was the big, I mean, I was nervous. I was nervous. I was going to speak in front of the computer club. At that time we met in the computer, in the Coronado center main building. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we had 145 to 165 people that night. That was a regular deal in the because ballroom. we had. Oh, yeah. We had so many people that needed PC assistance. I mean, we were talking Pentiums and, you know, and and uh, uh, Windows 98 and Windows 95 and 2000. And, you know, we were doing all these different variations and there was a lot of need at that time. But that need has changed so dramatically into, well, these things. That's right. It's turned into our, our 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 computer. You know, people who told you and me both 20 years ago, they would never have a computer. They have a smartphone. That's right. That's right. And, and you know, I'm sorry, go ahead, Pat. You know, one other thing I should point out is this is not just me alone doing this. Um, it started out quite by uh, accident, and we saw the value in doing it. And the two people that work on this specifically – are myself and David Kirsch. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's also a member of the computer club. As a matter of fact, he's the programs director. And David uh, tries to come up with the inventory, which is, it's it's the engine that makes this thing go. Uh, and we work together and uh, I try to sell what we get in the way of inventory. And I would say the biggest thing that that impedes me from making more money is inventory, especially since I said before, two of those phones uh, go south. I can't use them. They have to go to be recycled because I can't get into them in many mm -hmm. cases. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's it's a it's a very rewarding thing that I think we're both doing and, and you too. Well, David is a fantastic, and, and I'm not I'm not patting myself on the bat at, back at all, but I, when you, last time we talked about this, I went in my office and thought, okay, well, I've got a couple of these. I had five. I had five phones to donate. And, and I look at that and I go, if I'm the average Joe, and I mean, this is over the course of four or five, six, seven years, I promise you people have, well, and, and I'm sure that's not all you would take. If they had an old portable music player or a, 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 a what were the little iTunes devices or whatever, something like that, you'd be iPod. happy. To, I'm sorry? iPod? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be happy yeah. to reprogram those and resell them too, right? I'm telling you, whatever we can sell, we sell. Well, that's uh, cool. Tell me, tell me more about the workday. And when I was going with the, everybody's gone down to a, a phone, well, that's because when we have the help tech help sessions, people used to lug their computers down to the help tech session. Now they walk in with their tablets or their phones, and and the the tech club basically answers any question you have. Yeah. Well. Uh, you know, we try to help everybody. Like I said before, um, we have some people that know computers very well, and they handle that side of it. Uh, David and I handle this side of it. Um, I mean, these are some of the terrific reasons why being a member of the computer club 
Computer and Technology Club. Computer and Technology Club. Makes me pretty happy, I'll tell you. And this thing that we're doing, I get a good feeling from helping these kids. I bet you do. And and, well, and how much, I'm, I'm going to actually go into a page as you talk. Tell me how much we charge for a tech help session. Would you explain that to the people? Uh, gee, let me think about that. Well, that would be nothing. That would be zero. Zero. That would be zero. We actually, we, we will, uh, and let me see if I can pull this up real quick. There we go. Yep, there we go. There's the computer club. Actually, it's the technology and computer club. And uh, let's see, when is the next help session? The drop-in help is Thursday at 1, February the 2nd. But you can find it on our calendar here every month. Uh, just scroll down through here. Here's the board meeting. Here's the breakfast meeting. Here's the drop-in help session on the 15th. So the 1st and the 14th. So it's every two weeks. It's the second, the second and fourth Tuesday of the month. And you walk in and we charge you eggnog, zero, nada, zil, nip, right? That's correct. But would we like to see them become members? We would. <laughs> and would we turn down a donation to the scholarship fund? Absolutely not at all. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, uh, the membership fee uh, currently for the computer club is $20. And Indeed. it can it can be $20 for a whole family. Do y'all take payments? I mean, could I put it on the installment program or something, oh, Pat? Oh, I'm sure we could work something out. <laughs> to, Pat, for you, for you, <laughs> we could work something out. For, for me, it'd be 35 to 40. I know how you work, Pat. I know how you work. <laughs> well, there's going to be interest, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Shipping and handling, of course. Penalties, fees. You know what? I probably have to buy a permit to buy a membership to the PO. I mean, is that maybe? I don't know. We can't be sure about that. Pat, it's always been a pleasure to see you, my friend. I'm actually ready to see you in person soon. How about that? Sounds great to me. I tell you what, for Hot Springs Village Inside Out, I'm Dennis Simpson. He's Pat McCarty. We will see you next time. Thanks for watching and listening to Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a weekly podcast starring Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. Visit the website at hotspringsvillageinsideout.com.